Hi guys, Eddie with Exvault here, and today we're joined by Elizabeth, our head of client services. Hi everyone. And we're gonna be chatting about SSH keys, right? That's correct. We're going to go over how to go into your Exvault account and set up your own SSH keys for your users. Is that a common support request? It can be common for new accounts where you're planning on doing SFTP transfers, and especially in cases where a customer or a vendor is requiring the use of SSH keys. What are SSH keys? So SSH keys are a great way to let users connect to an Exavault account without having to transmit a password. It can be common for new accounts where you're planning on doing SFTP transfers, especially cases where a customer or a vendor is requiring the use of SSH keys. The SSH keys themselves come in pairs. There's a public key and a private key. The private key gets stored on the local computer of the user that will connect to Exavault. The public portion of the key actually gets stored inside your Exavault account. And we'll take you through the various ways to attach SSH keys to your user accounts. They can be a little tricky to get set up, but the great news is that once they are up and running, you don't have to do anything else with them again. So tell me a little bit about how SSH keys work with Exavault. So we store SSH keys in a very specific location in user accounts. They get stored inside the user's home folder in a special folder named .sftp. So if you look at your users, you can see how they may be assigned to different home folders. And if you want to use SSH keys, you'll need to have that .sftp folder located in that user's home folder. In addition, the key itself has to be in a particular format and it must be named authorized underscore keys in order to be recognized correctly by the Exavault server. What's the easiest way to get started with SSH keys? Well, the absolute easiest way to get started with SSH keys is just to let Exavault make the keys for you. This one is nice and simple. All you have to do is go to the user's page, find the user that you want to create SSH keys for, and choose the generate SSH keys option. This will give you a little prompt to confirm that you want to make the SSH key pair and then it will take just a moment to create that. You'll notice it did an automatic download on my system. This is the private key, but the public key is already in place. So we were looking at the tech support one user. And now if I go to the tech support folder, there's my .sftp folder and right inside it is the authorized keys file all ready to go. You don't have to do anything else apart from importing your private key into your SFTP client. So if I have a vendor or customer that already has a public key that they want to use, how do I do that? Well, if you're provided a public key, we can certainly use it on Exavault. The first thing you'll need to do is check to see if the key is in the proper format. So if you have access to the private key, just like I have access here, you can just upload the public key into the .sftp directory and make sure it's named authorized underscore keys, and then quite simply make an SFTP connection using that private key and see if it works. If you don't have access to the private portion of the key for testing, and this will come up commonly with a vendor who just provides you with the public key that they want to use with their user account, then you can open up the key file in a text editor to view the key. So one that looks correct will look something like this. You'll see begin SSH to public key at the top and end at the bottom and about this much information. This doesn't guarantee it's correct, but this is a pretty good indicator that you've got a key in the correct format. So you're alluding to something. If mine doesn't look like that. If yours doesn't look like that, there's a good chance that it's going to look a little something like this. It may be longer or shorter. A lot of times it will have a little prefix here where I've got the SSH hyphen RSA. So this is absolutely a valid SSH key. It's just not in the format that the Exavault server will recognize. So we'll need to do a little tech wizardry to convert it into a format that the Exavault server can use. And if you have access to a Mac computer, you can actually do this on your own. And we have directions for converting keys on our help page. We have a whole page about setting up SSH keys. And there's a command here this SSH keygen command that can be used to reformat your key into the proper format. So again, on a Mac, I'll open up a terminal, make sure that you're in the location where your key is stored, and then use that command to convert your key. Now, this is the name of the key, the public key that I was given by my vendor. If yours was named something else, make sure that you change that name. And then I run that command and it will make a new file for me that has my reformatted key. Well, let's take a look at that new key. 
So the new key is now in that proper format and is ready to be uploaded as soon as I rename that file again to authorized underscore keys. If you happen to be a Windows user, you won't be able to jump out to the command line and make this transformation quite so easily. And probably the easiest solution at that point is to go ahead and reach out to us as support. If you get the public key stored into the .sftp folder and let us know about it, we can take a look at the key and make that final transformation for you. Got it. And so they would just reach out to support at exavault.com, right? Right. And that's, again, if you don't have access to a Mac or a Linux computer, you're working in a Windows environment, just reach out to us and we can help you get over that last step. Cool. And is it possible for me to make my own key pair from scratch? It is absolutely possible. And again, we've got the instructions on our help page. Obviously, we recommend going with letting Exavault make the keys for you, if that's at all possible, because those will be in the right format right off the bat and you won't have to do any extra work. Is it possible for me to have more than one key pair in my authorized underscore keys file? It absolutely is possible. And that will happen, especially in cases where you have, again, multiple users who are using the same home folder. So they would both also be using the same .sftp directory inside that folder. And in that case, you will just take your keys and list them one after another in the file. And what that will look like is a little something like this. So you'll have your first key is there and then immediately after it, you put the next key and you just keep going till you have all the keys needed into your key file. Cool. So I could just keep stacking them as many as I need. Exactly. Got it. So this helps me not transmit my password all the time for security reasons if I need that and can help me with automated processes where I don't want to be physically typing in a password every time. Is that right? Those are both great uses for SSH keys, yes. Great, thanks for showing me that. And then thanks for your time, Elizabeth. Oh, it was my pleasure. If you need help with SSH keys, reach out to Elizabeth at support at Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe if you found this useful.